Ah, drop back, drop back, drop back. What's up guys? What I'm gonna show you is my preferred way to rig up baits for sharks. Sharks specifically from about five to seven feet in length. This is how I like to do it. Now obviously you're gonna need some things. Uh, number one, you're gonna need a bait fish. This is just a whiting that I caught just a few minutes ago. He's still alive, still kicking. So we're gonna dispatch him and I'm gonna show you guys my favorite way to rig up a shark bait. This is a really good entry size for shark fishing for sharks up to, you know, five to seven feet in length. You're gonna need a shark fishing leader, so here's ours. And then a couple of other things. You're gonna need some cotton thread. Uh, this is the same stuff they sell uh, for crabbing in most fishing tackle shops. You can just buy large, you know, balls of this for maybe a dollar ninety-nine, two ninety-nine, something like that. You're gonna want some of this. Do not use plastic, do not use zip ties, the cotton thread. And last but not least, a good sharp knifey. So there's our items right there. Bait, your leader, good sharp knife, and cotton thread. All right, first things first, the fish has been dispatched. This is now a dead animal. Here's what we're gonna do. Turn him over. I'm gonna get the sand off of him so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. What I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna take this knife and I'm gonna go in right between his pectoral fins, here and here, right down there, like that. And I'm gonna go from head to tail. And I'm gonna cut this guy right down the middle, but I'm not gonna cut him in half, it's very important. Make sure you break through those ribs. Keep this as close to his backbone as you can. Make sure you get real deep up near the head there. Again, cut through, cut through those ribs. Cut through the bone, but do not, do not, do not, do not cut through the skin on the back. See, you still can't see through the back. So you can see I've cut way down deep into the head here, followed along his backbone. All the organs and entrails are still in there. That is critical. All right, next step, I'm gonna cut off his tail right there. That being out in the water, guys, that's gonna catch the current. It's gonna move your bait around in the water. That can go. All right, take the hook from your leader. Real important, guys, if you're shark fishing, you gotta make sure you, in Texas anyway, an inline, non-stainless steel circle hook. So here's what you do. Take this hook, go through your fish, and the point is gonna come out right about there. Perfect. I wanna make sure the point comes out as close to the backbone as possible. That's very, very important. You don't want the point coming out over here or over here, right up along the ridge of his back. What I'm gonna do, push that through, and then I'm gonna make sure that I line the rest of the hook and the leader along his backbone. As deep as I cut, that's where that's going. And we are gonna keep all of the organs inside, fold it shut, get our hook situated the way we want. I want a gap right here that I can get my finger inside of. If that gap is smaller than the width of my finger, it's too small. You gotta make sure when a shark bites this, you want that hook point setting in his jaw just like that. And now this is where we get our cotton thread in the mix. So let's go about six inches here, cut one, do another one same length. One more, maybe go a little bit longer. I'm gonna start right by the pectorals. I'm gonna slide that cotton thread up under his pectorals, just like this. right next to the hook. We're gonna tighten that down, guys. Not too hard, remember, this cotton thread will break or you'll cut your bait in half. So tight enough to get a bite on the bait fish, but no tighter than that. Put a couple of overhand knots in it, doesn't have to be fancy. You just don't want it coming undone. And remember, if you've ever seen the Prestige, knots do change once they're wet. The Langford Double it held a little too well, you know? All right, so we've got one on. We're gonna go two, three. So here, let's go again. You can double it if you want. I don't like to do that. 
I like to go just once. That's just my preference. Tighten that down. Another overhand knot. Maybe you tie a square knot. It's up to you. If you were a Boy Scout, you can get fancy. Cut off the excess. We got one, two, we're gonna go three right here. So that's the finished product, guys. Our original fish, circle hook coming through the back. He's been cut down the middle, but not gutted. All the guts, all the good stuff is still in there. The cotton thread seals him back up. It hides our line, it hides our leader, and it keeps that hook in position. You'll notice I can push on that pretty hard with my thumb, and it's not going anywhere. That can get tumbled around in the surf and still hold its form just perfect. What I like most about this style of baiting, um, a lot of people when they use chunk baits for sharks, uh, the shark will come along and he'll grab the chunk bait and he'll just bite it off the hook. He won't take the hook in his mouth. Uh, sometimes when people bait up fish, let's say for example, you run your hook through the eye sockets up here. You've got all this dangling down here. The shark will come by. He'll eat that. He'll just take the back half of the bait that isn't hooked up. But when you rig your bait like this, when Mr. Shark comes along and he bites onto that bait, that hook is in his mouth and it's ready to be set. Now, if you're a little bit worried that I'll come along and just take off the head, you can take off the end here. See where my little finger is? You can take that off without sacrificing a whole lot of the good stuff. Just make sure you leave in the gills and all the organs. Just take off the end here. Now remember, a lot of people like to use zip ties for rigging the shark baits. I don't like that for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're putting plastic in the ocean. There's no way that shark is gonna bite on that bait and that plastic isn't gonna end up either being ingested by the shark or end up out in the ocean. So number one, the second reason I like to use the cotton thread over plastic is because of the texture. Sharks are rather sensitive animals. A lot of people think that they just swim around eating anything in their path. It doesn't matter what you throw out there, but that's not really true. You might have success with sharks biting plastic or hard objects on your baits, uh, but I think you'll have more success going with a more subtle approach. Third, the cotton soaks up the juices and the blood and all the oils from the fish and holds it in the area longer. So this makes your bait uh, more of a slow burn presentation. When you're doing this kind of shark fishing where you've got big rod and a reel going out real far, you put it out there on your kayak, uh, this is a slow burn. Sometimes the shark might come along and bite straight away, uh, but you want your bait, your presentation, to be working for you as long as possible and holding the oils and the blood in that general area as long as you can is gonna be an advantage and that's why you wanna use this. Watch this. So good example guys, here's that cotton thread. Nice and white, brand new, right? So here's a bag of bait. Let's just, uh, let's just dunk it in these oils for a minute. Kinda rub it around in there. All right, now we're gonna pull it out. Look at that. Look at that, now it's brown with the blood and the oil and all the grossness from those, uh, those mullet that I've chopped up in here. But that is just gold when you're shark fishing. That in itself is an attractant to the sharks. So when your bait is leaking oils, leaking blood, to draw those fish in, to have it soak into the cotton thread surrounding your bait, uh, it just ups the ante a little bit in my opinion. Here's the end of my leader, again, homemade, and our bait, a whiting done my favorite way. Beautiful bait, let's drop it in. We're about 150, 200 yards away. Perfect for a, a shark around four feet. Now we just gotta paddle back. Ah, drop back, drop back, drop back. 
Tighten down, tighten down. Just feel if he's there. Well, guys, I reeled in most of this line feeling like there was something different. And sure enough, I've got a shark on the end. <laughs> he, uh, he was just kind of cruising with us the whole time. But there he is. I'm telling you, it's always when the line starts going sideways, something's up. But look at that little shark right there. There he is. Perfect. That's a perfect example. I can handle him quite easily. So let's get this put away real quick and get him unhooked. I want to get him back in the water as fast as we can. Absolutely beautiful specimen. Beautiful, beautiful, um, yeah, black tip shark. Beautiful. Well, there you have it guys very very simple way but highly highly effective way to rig up your shark baits now remember this is not the only way there are many ways to do any given thing i'm not saying mine's the best i'm not saying you've been doing it wrong for years none of that this is my way it has worked for me for many 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 years now um, it gets me loads of good sharks hopefully it'll work for you too well, that'll just about do it for us today, guys. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, hit that little bell so when I upload a video like this one, you get the notifications straight away. If you guys want to help support the channel, make these types of videos possible, check out our Patreon. The link is in the description. Lots of good stuff listed there. You can kind of see what you would get in return for being a patron. More is coming, guys. Stay tuned, and until it's here, I will see you guys later.